Okay, so we're having some issues with the course project, and I want to try to make this as easy for you as possible so that you can just practice some of the stuff that you've learned instead of having to learn Packet Tracer from scratch. So if you can get it installed, and even if you can't, I'm going to show you here how to use Packet Tracer. We can go to lab.devry.edu. You won't have to download it here. You may have to download that little Citrix receiver, but you will not have to download Packet Tracer. You're welcome to download Packet Tracer if you want to. So once you get here into apps, you can find Cisco Packet Tracer, and these are in alphabetical order and launch it. Okay, it does take it a few minutes to launch and if you get this question hit permit use. And it's asking us to log in but I think we can do it this way with a guest login and it'll ask you to create an account. Okay, so you can fill in your information and then there's usually a quick math problem and submit. Oh, I have to certify that I'm 13 years old. Okay, and I hate pages like this. You have to pick one of these two, either send or don't send. All right, please log in. Now we'll have to go check our email address, pull our file. Give me one second. And welcome, you're now enrolled. Log in at NetACAD portal. And also from there, you can download packet tracer as well if you'd like. Okay, so now I'm here and I need to set up a basic router. What made me pick that one? I remember that number. I'm pretty sure it's got the gigabit port that I need. And if I'm not sure, I can come here and usually the configuration tab will pop up and I can um, look at what interfaces are available. So it does have two gigabit Ethernet interfaces. All right, now I want to switch. My switches are down here. See, these are routers. These are the switches. So now I'm going to pick a switch, and I'm going to go with the 2960 and get two of those. Now I want two PCs, and I'm probably going to upload this basic file here for you so you can use it to and you won't have to build this you'll just have to start from this and do your programming on your different devices and i'm going to show you here how to do that as well all right um i'm going to use the shortcut for connecting which is auto connect and then it knows what kind of cable to put in there at this point, I'm not worried about that part. I'm just worried about getting our basic network hooked up. Now, you can probably do this on your own, so I don't really have to save the file that you can see that wasn't terribly difficult. And now to program each device, I'll click on the device, go to the command line interface, press return to get started, and now you're pretty much where you've been in your labs on your other devices, and you can type in Enable, Comp T, and configure your devices right here at the command prompt. Um, as far as the PCs go, they're pretty much the same way. I can come set up their configuration here. There's a desktop tab, and once I click on it, I can go to IP configuration and set the IP address subnet mask and default gateway right here for the PCs. Okay, now the other thing we looked at was IP addresses to use. If you've already started on a scheme, I'm not going to be overly particular on that, but what I would like to see if you haven't started is somewhere in the neighborhood of what we did in our um, week six lab sorry here the ip subnetting lab so in this particular lab they walked us through setting up three subnets we only need two actually i think this one had five no it had three yeah it had three uh one two three. no it had five actually yeah, so the lab's a little lax there and only requesting two. 
So let's start with the same address, this 192.50.6.1. And then we're going to create two subnets from that IP address. So let me pull that into my IP calculator. It's not one second. I know I posted it in files for y'all to use as well. So if you want, you can download it from files. This is actually a subnet calculator that I had built when I was just learning to teach the class. All right, so the network address I gave myself was 192.50.6, and we're going to start with zero. And then we're going to, like I said, we're going to break that into two subnets. Um, we can call one admin and the other faculty. Um, in the administration side, let's say I want um, 40 users. And for faculty, I need at least 15. Okay, so what does that tell me as I start getting ready to subnet? Well, I always start with the size of the biggest network. And I'm going to go from 0 to 39 to make sure I have at least 40. Well, in this case, what I really want to do is look at what bit is just over 40, 32 wouldn't work, so 64. So I really want to go with 63 so that I know I have room for growth in here as well. And I'm going to my next um, I'm going to leave some room in there for development as well as make sure I can include any, you know, you may have broken wires, bad connections, all kinds of stuff can go wrong when you're setting up and stations. So you want to have extra addresses in there to play around with. Um, maybe everybody orders a printer and all of a sudden you get a printer on everybody's computer, then we wouldn't have enough. Um, so just to give you an idea of what kind of things can get added onto the network. Okay, so I put 63 in here, and you can tell because it gives me 63 over here once I get the ones right. Now for my subnet mask. In my subnet mask, if, I ha if the number stays the same, it gets a 1 down here. If in the subnet mask, or in between those two addresses, the numbers change, then they don't get a 1, they get a 0. And this determines my subnet mask. So for this first group, its range will be 0 to 63. The first usable is 1. The last usable is 62. And our subnet mask is 192. Okay, so that means this next group is going to start at 64. And I need it to contain at least 15. Knowing what I know, I would not go with just 16. I would go with the 32. In planning for size and future expansion, you don't ever want to leave yourself one open IP address. That's just nonsense. Um, Okay, and then 64 and 32, and you'll see why I like using my spreadsheet. Oops, wrong one. Put it down here and do my auto sign. 96, so I'm going to go to 95, 64, and if you're not sure, plug in the 32. 
and plug in zeros here as well so you can see where that puts me at. That puts me at the 96. So that's too much. I got to take that one away. So, well, Professor, you said it was going to 96. Well, it'll go from 64 to 95, and 96 would actually start my next group here. And then I could subnet out different groups down through here. Okay, so for our second subnet, we have the network address of 64, first usable 65, Broadcast is 95, last usable 94, and our subnet mask, I did not correct. Those three stay the same. Those all change, so that gives us a subnet mask of 224. Okay, so those are your two sets of networks or two sets of IP addresses, you can decide what to assign to which devices. Just know that this is one subnet, this is your other subnet, so these two devices have to be in the same network as well as that router interface. And I hope that gets you off to a good start on your project. Please let me know if you have any questions. Oh, pinging. I can go on the P PC and go to the, not terminal, sorry. Go to the PC and go to the command prompt, just like we do on our PC. And then you can ping the address of the other PC. And actually, I would do it step by step. Ping the switch, ping the router, or ping the router, ping the other side of the router, then ping your other PC.